There's almost no crop as straightforward and easy to plant as garlic. But it's a long one to grow to harvest. And in that time, even small mistakes are compounded into, well, small results. It's garlic planting season. And today it's my goal to help you avoid nine months from now, the dreaded small bulb syndrome. There's 10 mistakes to avoid. And despite the wind, we'll cover them all today so that your next garlic harvest is your best one yet. People that watch garlic videos, or at least those of you watching this right now, fall into a range of categories. From planting garlic diligently every year, to trying it a couple of times, you know, with some mixed results, to maybe this is your first time and you're watching this video as a tutorial. Well, first up, I'm gonna suggest that you watch this video here as an all-encompassing guide to growing garlic. It's an in-depth look at growing garlic start to finish, and I highly recommend it. However, for the sake of this video and to bring everybody up to speed so that we're all on the same page, here's the quick garlic refresher that you never knew you needed. Garlic is a cool weather crop planted in temperate regions at the onset of fall. A single clove from a harvested bulb is planted, not very deep, and left in a semi-dormant state all winter. The next spring, the garlic sprouts with gusto, and if looked after properly for the next four to five months, it's harvested in the early summer. Cure the bulbs for about two weeks in a dry space and they'll keep for up to six months. But don't rest for too long because the whole process starts all over again in about two to three months after the harvest. Okay, so now that we're all up to speed, let's zero in on those 10 things that stand in your way to a garlic utopia. If you're right here, like me, bulb in hand and ready to plant, you gotta think about spacing. Suggested spacing historically has been four to eight inches apart, clove to clove. Six inches apart is where I plant and is the sweet spot for most varieties. Garlic hates to compete, even with itself, and planting too close together will most assuredly result in a smaller harvest. And on the flip side, spacing any further apart than that is kind of a waste of usable growing space. Keep it to six inches and you're good to go. And since we're here, we might as well take the opportunity to talk about planting depth. The consensus is that one to three inches deep is ideal for planting your cloves. Too far down and the cloves are gonna expend unnecessary energy to try and emerge from the depths in the spring, resulting in those small bulbs. And too shallow, you run the risk of the freeze thaw action of the soil's top layer heaving the close to the surface, exposing them to the full force of winter, resulting in no bulbs. Two inches deep is ideal, not including mulch. Getting the spacing and planting depth right is great, but if what you're planting in is wrong, it could be moot. Garlic always prefers a rich, sandy loam that drains well. As an allium, it does not perform well in poor drainage or compact clay type soils. Incorporate fresh compost into your beds or pots. And when possible, plant on the surface, adding fresh potting mix around the cloves to give it that extra ideal soil layer, you know, directly around the immediate growing area. Garlic will always perform at its peak when its soil requirements are met or exceeded. Finishing off the soil related issues, we have nutrient levels. Garlic is actually quite a heavy feeder and it'll reward low nutrients and poor fertility with equally poor results. I avoid animal manures for my garlic and I stay away from nitrogen heavy fertilizers in general. Too much nitrogen and your garlic will be focused on vegetative growth of its shoots rather than actual bulb production. This is why compost is so ideal. Keep the nutrient load balanced, slow release, and you'll enjoy better results. 
Garlic comes in two varieties, hardneck and softneck. These two groups of garlic differ in a few ways. One, hardneck garlic sends up a flowering structure called escape in the late spring. Hardnecks also tend to have larger bulbs with fewer cloves, and their taste is often more flavorful and complex than that of the softnecks. The most important difference, however, is and always will be climate preference. Generally, hardneck varieties are grown in more northern or temperate regions and planted in the fall before the onset of winter. Softnecks, however, give us that option of planting garlic in warmer climates, where they're planted in the coldest part of the year and harvested more quickly than hardnecks that same summer. Most definitely picking the right variety for your climate is going to be a contributing factor to your garlic success. One surefire way to perpetuate small bulb syndrome is to plant small cloves. In the case of growing garlic, if you start small, you're going to end up small. Pick the biggest and best cloves possible from the previous season if you want to maximize the next season's harvest. Like we touched on earlier, garlic hates competition. So when you're planting out a fresh bed of garlic, remove all the weeds. Garlic is a loner and it just hates neighbors. There's no way around it. Keep the beds clear, not only in the beginning, but also throughout the life cycle of the crop. It really does make a difference. Now, this one's for you hardneck growers out there. You gotta cut your scapes. The scape is a flowering head and just like any flowering structures, they're a drain on the plant. In the case of garlic scapes, they're a real drain. They're big, bulky, and solid. No question they're stealing resources from the bulb. So if you want the best bulbs, eliminate the scapes as soon as they appear. Cut them down where they meet the first whirl of leaves. Easy peasy. Now, I'm not joking with this one. Make sure you're planting your garlic cloves root side down. Garlic cloves appear somewhat homogenous, top to bottom, but rest assured, there's a right way to plant them. When you break a full garlic bulb apart, you'll see that the growing tip end of the clove is slightly more pointed than the blunt root end. It's subtle, but as you see more and more cloves, you're less likely to make the mistake of planting one upside down. Which is good, because if you do, quite likely, the garlic bulb won't even grow. So while kind of humorous in its simplicity, it's obviously very important to get it right. And lastly, we come to our most important aspect of growing garlic, and that's timing. The single biggest factor that I've seen in failed garlic crops and grower frustration over and over is the incorrect timing of planting the garlic. All too often, a new gardener will plant their garlic cloves in the spring with the rest of their traditional crops. And then they're left wondering what the heck happened when the garlic is the only crop with less than stellar results. Like we said, garlic is a long crop, especially the hardneck varieties, when they're literally planted the calendar year before that summer's harvest. It's a difficult concept for new growers to wrap their heads around that garlic actually overwinters in the ground, sprouts in the spring, and is harvested anywhere from eight to 10 months after the initial planting. Some of these garlic planting mistakes can be fixed and the crop salvaged. Timing is not one of them. Without a doubt, planting garlic at the wrong time will always yield poor results. Always. If you can avoid these 10 garlic planting and growing mistakes, you're almost assured of an unbelievable bounty come harvest time. Garlic is a long crop and mistakes get compounded because of this. But dodging the 10 things that we talked about today will make sure that your garlic growing experience is a fruitful one. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.